if you're looking at all of these lessons consecutively, everything up to this point in terms of bonding has been bonding that is being considered as, 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 as forces of attraction between atoms in a molecule, and that's called, well, either a covalent bond or an ionic bond, but it's a bond between atoms in a molecule, so it's an intramolecular bond. But you know what? Molecules can bond together. So if you've got an H and an H, and they're bonded together to form a molecule, and now this is the H2, well, they can actually bond to other H2s because H2 can form a liquid and a solid. So how do we form liquids and solids? Liquids and solids are made by molecules coming together. Well, how are they attracted to one another? Same way as the other ones are. It's always a force of attraction between protons and electrons. So here's the thing. If you've got two, uh, here's an H2 molecule, and here's another H2 molecule. They're attracted to one another to form a bond that's intermolecular between the two of them. Now, how does that actually form? Well, in this case, this we know is going to be a nonpolar molecule. Now, that's going to be important when we talk about this down here, but just hang on. <laughs> hang on. This is going to be a force of attraction between molecules that are nonpolar in nature or have no dipole moment. Um, now, what is that going to uh, entail? Well, protons and electrons are attracting one another here to form a covalent bond. But that doesn't mean that the protons here can't attract electrons in another molecule once they're all locked up here and bonded. They still do. So protons of one molecule attracting electrons from another can still bring molecules together and make them stick together and form units. Now, if you've got enough energy in the room already, H2 loves, loves to stay as a gas. But if you remove the energy from the room, the force of attraction between these, these protons here and electrons here might be sufficient enough, if the room is cool enough, to bring them together. By the way, in order to make hydrogen into a liquid and a solid, you have to cool down to about 20 degrees before absolute zero to have those things happen. So, can it happen? Yes. How does it happen? It's still electrostatic interaction, but it's got a specific name. These are called, these intermolecular forces that I'm going to describe to you here are called van der Waals forces. And the van der Waals force in particular here that we're concerned with is the one that bonds nonpolar molecules together called London dispersion forces, or just the the attraction for protons of one molecule to the electrons of, of another and vice versa. And that's going to be called the London dispersion force that keeps these two molecules together. You have to know that. Now, by the way, if you actually had another nonpolar couple of atoms come together, what's their London dispersion force going to be as opposed to this one? More protons and electrons here and here means stronger intermolecular forces, and that means that that LDF is a stronger force than this one, which means then it takes more energy to break apart two F's, F2s when they're bonded together than two H2s, and so F2 is going to have a higher boiling point, and it does. The more protons and electrons that you have, the higher the LDF force and the stronger the bonding. Is that not cool? That's very cool. And by the way, so that means that, by the, by the way, that means then that the more atoms that you have in a molecule, generally the boiling points go, and the melting points and boiling points all, all rise, right? And, um, and, oh, and if you had uh, molecules that had the same number of protons and uh, electrons in them, well, uh, and they were nonpolar in nature, actually the length of the molecules, the longer the molecules there are, the stronger the, the force. So, sometimes you have isomers of carbon atoms that are a, a certain length, and if the longer the molecules are, the stronger the attraction between them and the higher the boiling point. If you had a, another set of molecules that actually had the same number of, of, of atoms, but they were uh, but they were not in a linear fashion, but they were kind of like maybe a little bent, well, that's not as long a zipper as this is to close it off, close it up. <laughs> that actually means that that's got a lower boiling point, just to tell you. So here's the thing. These have London dispersion force bonding, attraction of protons to electrons. Well, so does HCl when it bonds to another HCl. So London dispersion force is there as well, but guess what? You know that this is polar molecule. 
And this is a polar molecule here, where the arrow points to the one that's more electronegative. This is the partially negative end, partially positive end. Partially positive and negative? That means then that not only do protons and electrons attract, but their overall charge inside the molecule attracts. And the partially negative end here attracts the partially positive end. And that's a dipole attracting a dipole. So it's called a dipole-dipole force. And something that generally has dipole-dipole in London dispersion will have a higher boiling point than something that just has London dispersion. Cool! Now, by the way, that is if you really have the same number of protons and electrons you're comparing. Um, and we don't in any of these cases. But the, 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 the generalization is that if you have things that are isoelectronic, or the same number of protons and electrons in, in molecules, but you have one that has one that is polar and the other one's nonpolar molecule, the polar molecules have LDF, everything has LDF, intermolecularly speaking, but a polar molecule has dipole dipole, and that gives it just a slightly, not necessarily slightly, but even greater. Uh, boiling point. And then there's another one we'll talk about right now that's even, well, it's even higher than that. 